Good morning, guys. Can you hear it? Maybe you hear the birds more? It is 5.30 in the morning here in Sarajevo, and the first call to prayer has just started. Today I was hoping to show you a video of another Balkan, former Yugoslav capital, which is Zagreb. We've passed through Zagreb a couple times on this channel, but we've never really given it its own proper adventure. And that was going to be my goal yesterday. And I did spend the day in Zagreb yesterday, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't exactly in the way that I intended because I was in Switzerland before this, before I came back to Sarajevo to spend a few weeks. And while I was in Switzerland, I took a night train from Zurich to Zagreb. Well, foolishly, on this night train, I switched compartments into an empty compartment, which was great for sleeping, but I left my bag right under the bench that I was sleeping on, and at some point in Austria, some motherfucker came onto the train and stole my computer right out of my bag, right out of this bag that was right under me while I was sleeping. And look at this guy, this is Vučko, the mascot of the 1984 Olympics here in Sarajevo. So yeah. I mean, that's kind of the whole story. It's not like a whole story of me getting screwed over. It's just one little thing of me getting screwed over. And uh, now I don't have a computer, which for most people would be obviously annoying, but not the end of the world. But I have a remote job, so I need to use my computer basically to survive. So then last night I had a night bus from Zagreb to Sarajevo. So I spent the day in Zagreb. And I went to the Zagreb Public Library where I was able to log on to a computer and do some work. But the thing that sucks is I was in no I was in no spirits to vlog yesterday from Zagreb. So I didn't get to do a whole adventure in Zagreb. I just kind of drank coffee and sulked over my computer, looked into new computer options. So a Zagreb adventure will have to wait, but I figured now I'm here in Sarajevo at 5.30 in the morning. I can't get into my apartment for another seven hours. And uh, I figured I would show you guys what the city of Sarajevo is like when it's completely empty at this time of day. So I will turn the camera around. And now you guys don't have to look at me anymore. You can just enjoy in beautiful 1080p the beautiful Sarajevo streets. We can watch the sun rise together. And as long as it doesn't rain too much, I can show you some of the things here that normally would just be crowded with people. But because it's so early in the morning, I can show you some of the cool sights of Sarajevo's old town without disruption. You can see the city is starting to come alive just a little bit. And what a beautiful day it is. And here it is, the Miliatska River. Over here is the Skenderia complex, which was used for the figure skating and some of the hockey games during the 1984 Olympics, the Serena over here. So a little bit of Olympic history everywhere you go in this city. And look, there's Vučko again, the, the wolf who was the mascot of the 1984 Olympics. And now we're getting into the part of town on the left that was built mostly by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And accordingly, all of the architecture, for the most part, is this Austrian style architecture. Over there is the Institute of Fine Arts here in Sarajevo. And just as the arts are, this is a fine building. beautiful Austrian built building even though fuck Austria because they stole my laptop and 
And it's important to remember that everywhere in the city, you have nice communist architecture as well. You can really tell in which era each building was built. This one was clearly built in the Austrian, Austro-Hungarian era, and then this one was clearly built in the communist era. Over the centuries, Sarajevo earned the reputation for itself of being the Jerusalem of Europe. And now I'm gonna show you just why that is. It's because right here, all in one neighborhood, and really just in a couple blocks, you have right here a Serbian Orthodox Church. And now I'm not gonna cut at all. I'm not gonna cut the footage. I might speed it up, but I won't cut it so you can see just how close these other establishments are. So here's this beautiful Serbian Orthodox Church, which I think was built in the early 1900s. And now here on the left is the Catholic Cathedral of Sarajevo, which was built by the Austro-Hungarians in the late 1800s, I believe. And it's just a one and a half minute walk from the Serbian Orthodox Cathedral. And here on the ground is a darker part of Sarajevo's history. Obviously there was a ton of damage done to the city during the war, the siege in the 90s. And so in certain instances, they've preserved the damage to the asphalt like this, and they've painted it red to show the blood of the people that was spilled during the siege. And I love this view. It's very rare to get to see this without hundreds of people walking around. Okay, so now the walk continues. I've never seen this street empty in my life. This is amazing. But that's okay, I'm not ashamed to do a little bit of tourism every once in a while on this channel. And the best time to do tourism is at six in the morning when there's no one else out. And now here, just a one, maybe two minute walk, from the Catholic Cathedral is a mosque. Now this is not the main mosque of Sarajevo, that's just up ahead a bit more, but this is a mosque here. Oh, and there's a cat. My theory holds true, of cats standing outside of religious buildings in Bosnia and Herzegovina. But we're not done yet. But if you turn left right here, then you will see my friends, the synagogue of Sarajevo. There was a decent sized Jewish population here in Sarajevo, but uh, after the war in the 90s, most of them left and went elsewhere. But yeah, so that is why they call Sarajevo the Jerusalem of Europe. It's because you have all in one little neighborhood, you have a Serbian Orthodox church, a Catholic cathedral, a mosque, and a synagogue, all within a five minute walk of each other. I mean, where else in the world do you have those four buildings? Probably nowhere. Maybe in Jerusalem, and that's about it. And now I'm gonna show you what is maybe my favorite part of Sarajevo, just in general. So I've already mentioned that you can kind of tell what era buildings were built in based on the architecture. Well, here you can see this part of the city is all like Turkish architecture, low down buildings, more mosques, the tiled roofs like this. 
This could be a street in Istanbul. But then you come right here, and all of this is built by the Austrians. And so you have this. Sarajevo meeting of cultures, east and west. And that's pretty great. Another one of my favorite parts about this area, which is called Bascharsia. Charsia means like market or bazaar area. Here's the main mosque of Sarajevo, by the way. And one of my favorite things is that right outside, there's just perpetual fresh water. This is usually filled with hundreds, thousands of people. And yet right now, completely empty. This is amazing. What more could you ask for really than just this beautiful area all to yourself? Boots. And you really have some shops that just have cool stuff. This place is my favorite to just walk by and look at the paintings in the window. And you really just have these nice shops that have nice handmade things. I bought a little lamb plush toy here. And here they have another Vuchko. It's very cute. They have Mantie, the uh the traditional morning and afternoon snack of Novi Pazar and yeah it's just a nice area of the city and the smells of the pekaras and of the burek jinitsas are starting to waft through the streets calling my nose to them during the day you would never see cars in this part of the city, but since there's no one here this early in the morning, there have been cars, more cars than people. You can get some really nice, like teapots or coffee sets, Bosnian coffee sets here. Just a lot of cool stuff. Empty. And at the end of this street, is the town hall, the city hall, that was built by the Austro-Hungarians in the late 1800s. And one thing I want to show quickly if I can find it. Is that in this part of town, there's not a lot of evidence of the war. 30 years ago, I think they've done a really good job restoring a lot of this stuff. But if you keep your eyes out, if you keep your eyes peeled, then you'll notice a lot of things like this sign up here. For example, on this bathroom, this public bathroom. So it says, public bathroom, destroyed 1992, rebuilt 2002. We've done a really good job rebuilding this city. And hopefully it can continue to prosper and grow in the future. This is another great street here. And it's a little bit different now because it's in the morning and things are closed. But these are all artisan metal makers. A lot of them have had these stores for hundreds of years in their family. The street was laid out in the 16th century at a time when Sarajevo's craft and trade center was beginning to form. Different types of copper dishes 
and other souvenirs were sold here, and even today these items are what make the street stand out. So this street is called Kazanjiluk. And all of these are like little artisan metal shops where they make coffee sets and whatever else you make out of copper. And it's really interesting to see it with all these stores closed because during the daytime these windows are open and you can see all of the stuff that they're making. And sometimes you can, you walk by and you just see a guy pounding with a hammer making some metal. And this here, the Sebil. Woo! Gotta watch out for the pigeons in this area. But this thing is called the Sebil, and it's the old Ottoman fountain. A lot of Ottoman built cities have one of these. And Sarajevo has one of the biggest ones, probably the biggest one in the Balkans at least. And I think, uh, that's been the tour of the Sarajevo Old Town. Now you understand why it's called the Jerusalem of Europe. And I just wanted to show you some of the things that might be a little bit more touristy than what you're accustomed to seeing on my channel. But I think that in Sarajevo, even the touristy things are really cool and worth showing. So uh, I'm glad that I got to see these things so early in the morning with nobody out and about. So thanks for watching and have a great day. Also guys, this video is loosely, loosely based on the free walking tour given by Sarajevo Tours with Addis. Uh, I could never provide nearly as much information or shine as much light on these things as he can. So if you ever do come to Sarajevo, make sure you check him out. Um, take one of his free walking tours. I'll put the link in the description with his information. But yeah, Sarajevo Tours with Addis is uh, definitely a great way to get to see what I just saw. Um, and talk to someone who's actually experienced a lot of the things that he's talking about. He's lived here his whole life. He's a history guy. Um, so yeah, peace.